Nolan Young could be exposed slightly because obviously Sean Wright Phillips likes to get forward and in this formation England will want Ericsson will want him to get forward Rooney's going to float around a lot which could leave Ashley Cole exposed so it's really important that England uh, that, that Northern Ireland try and use those strengths to, to put England under some pressure but in saying that we've got to look at the England players We've got fantastic talent at our disposal these days. I think people have been frustrated with the last couple of results. Even though we beat Wales, Engl England fans expected maybe a better performance. Tonight's an opportunity to sort of make up some of that, uh, some of those problems that we've had over recent games, and a an opportunity for these players to really show that they're focused on, on what the job in hand is, and that's to qualify for the World Cup and then go on and do well in it. Well, this uh, stadium, in many ways, is this. It hasn't even started yet, look. This uh, ground does have its little odd characteristics. The dressing room tunnel that they're coming out of now is very narrow. There's hardly room for two teams to walk side by side until they actually come out in the corner of the ground here. The officials, by the way, leading them out of from Switzerland. David Beckham, the two mascots, or two of the mascots anyway, on the uh, Northern Ireland side are the goalkeeper's sons, Mike Taylor. He's got uh, his two boys uh, having an evening to remember, Joseph Seven and Oliver Six. And uh, he'll also be hoping, if he can, to keep a, a clean sheet for as long as possible. He was a bit unlucky at Old Trafford because uh, one of the goals that England scored was an own goal. And uh, we'll have very shortly now the uh, ceremonial part of the evening. There'll be national anthems, there'll be a presentation party coming onto the pitch. And we'll also see Northern Ireland wearing black armbands because one of their squad players, uh, Colin Murdoch, uh, has our sympathy. His father passed away last night. In fact, as a result of that, he won't be on the uh, Northern Ireland substitute bench. Northern Ireland have not beaten England in Belfast since 1927, and their last win was at Wembley in 1972, a headed goal by Terry Neal, player manager there. Here's Jeff Thompson, the uh, English FA chairman, coming out to meet the Irish team, led by Aaron Hughes, the captain. A little bit of um, superstition in the case of Aaron Hughes. He always wears number 18, even when he's in the starting lineup. So Ireland won't have a number four unless that substitute comes on. Walking down the line as well is uh, Howard Wells, the chief executive of the Irish FA. for your attention and respect as we introduce from Belfast Mr. Peter Corey to sing the national anthem. <laughs> respectfully sung and the handshakes now as the England players go down the line and Northern Ireland tonight have announced an unchanged team for the first time in eight and a half years Laurie Sanchez picking the side that uh, faced Azerbaijan four days ago 
And for those of you that aren't familiar with all of them, there are four players from the Premiership, Taylor and Johnson of Birmingham, Hughes and Davis of Aston Villa, five from Championship clubs, Baird of Southampton, Capaldi of Plymouth, Gillespie Sheffield United, Elliott from Hull City, who scored on Saturday, and Healy of Leeds, the top scorer in Irish history. Centre-back Cragen plays for Motherwell, striker James Quinn, who's useful in the air, is now with League Two side Peterborough. And, of course, Laurie Sanchez did send two players, Whitley and Mulrine, home last week uh, for breaking a curfew. Sven Joran Eriksson, in recalling Michael Owen, has told Wayne Rooney to play as he does for Manchester United in a kind of half-and-half -half position to one side of the main striker on the left in this case. There are three players there on yellow cards. Rooney's one of them, Beckham and Ashley Cole. The two centre-backs again, Carragher and Ferdinand, because Terry Campbell and King are all injured. And uh, that's the side, really, that I think most of us expected Ericsson to come up with. Wright Phillips encouraged to stay wide on the right. Among the substitutes there, Northern Ireland have Warren Feeney, who came on against Azerbaijan and scored from a penalty. And uh, Joe Cole now takes his place on the England bench. The man to give way there is Kieran Richardson, despite coming on against Wales. Mentioned too tonight for another veteran figure of Northern Ireland football. That's Derek McKinley. He's the kit manager and he's on duty for the 182nd consecutive international. So much so that the Irish FA are contacting FIFA to find out if uh, Derek has set some kind of world record. And also helping. Oh, well, we'll wait because I think we're going to have the minute silence for uh, the sadly departed Mr. Des Murdoch. Also helping Laurie Sanchez with his preparation for this match. You won't see him down on the bench, he's up in the stand, is Les Reed, formerly, ironically, a senior coach with the England team. Laurie's also got help from uh, Jerry Armstrong, Terry Gibson, and Dave Besant in his management structure. Early minutes important, Graham? Early minutes are very important for both sides. England's formation is important, how that works early on. If they can get Wayne Rooney on the ball in the sort of areas that he likes to work in, he can provide um, a really dangerous outlet for England. Equally, Northern Ireland have to work very hard at closing England down, getting their distances from the goal correct so they don't leave a lot of space in behind them, uh, otherwise they get exposed by Michael Owen's runs. And I think they just need to work as hard as they can in unsettling them. Massimo Busaka from Switzerland, 36-year-old Western Tour. There's the man with the whistle, the first foul as well, and uh, I think Ashley Cobbles going to be a bit of a target there on his two tackles tonight, but uh, that was James Quinn, who used to play in Holland for Willem Tway. Never quite fulfilled his potential, he's very good in the air, given the right service. He certainly is, I saw him play against Poland in their opening qualification match, and, and he had flashes of, of excitement, but I think his, uh, his goal-scoring record for a centre-forward is, is something that, that he'd be looking to improve on, uh, and I think now this is aimed towards Wayne Rooney, it's come off Cragen, now Stephen Gerrard, Northern Ireland in their traditional green shirts, centre-backs being examined a bit early on, and Capaldi who has somewhat um, mixed memories of the match at Old Trafford, this is Owen, Gerrard, now Rooney, Owen's in the centre right, and it's coming in from the far side into the box, Sanchez is already out at the edge of the perimeter area, just reminding his players what their respective duties are. Had a very uh, good session yesterday morning, the Irish team. Here's Beckham. Gerard. Oh, the tackles are flying in already, Graham. They certainly are, that's as we expected, though. I think uh, the Northern Ireland players will be looking to, to really hassle England as much as they can. And, and just try and unsettle them, and that's that's you know the point of, of playing at home is, is to start the game as, as quickly as you can. Just to see how Luke Young does tonight, he was steady against Wales and playing largely because Gary Neville is on it. Here's Sean Wright Phillips. This is 
Beckham in the quarterback position as some people are calling it. He says the Northern Ireland fans, every time a tackle's won, the ball goes out of play, something's blocked, they're cheering, so this is something that, that the Northern Irish players can feed off. Yes, Laurie Sanchez's instructions were to really get to grips with England in the uh, marking, covering and channeling sense, but Sean Wright Phillips has turned Capaldi here. Rudy's in the centre, there's a deflection on the cross, it's a corner. What a pass from David Beckham, I mean, this, this quarterback role, as it's been called, um, just there, he picked the ball up, came inside, well inside his own half, and he hit a ball slightly to the outside of his foot, enticing the defender to try and intercept it. Goes to Sean Wright Phillips, great crossfield pass. Sean Wright Phillips then, one-on-one, -on -one, he's great at that. I've experienced him running at me a few times, and he's, it's not a nice thing to <laughs> on a pitch. Here's Beckham's corner, Rooney goes near post. Ferdinand still in there. Davis of uh, Aston Villa was back there helping out. And Capaldi finally uh, completed the clearance. Here's Jamie Carragher, number six for England. Ashley Cole. Rooney. Foul by Craig. And uh, I think the referee wants a quick word here with the Motherwell centre back. Puts the ball down. And then looks for right Phillips again. It's another beauty. This time his first touch just gave Capaldi a side of the ball. It's a corner. England second then. For these, Ferdinand and uh, Carragher are both coming forward. Lampard's in there as well. Rio Ferdinand getting in real contact on that back by right Phillips to Beckham driven ball this time there's Ferdinand again this is Owen little jink inside Gerard moved across once more to Beckham now Carragher That's good strong play by the centre back and then the ball well there was a flag up anyway I think somebody was offside there Yeah, you can see Carragher driving into the box. It's dangerous play when a when a player gets into that area and he's got he's got a head of steam ahead of him. I think I think the linesman presumed it was a pass. I think Jamie Carragher was trying to trying to get his own glory by by going all the way. But uh, uh, the linesman, you know, obviously once he's given a decision, that's it. Well, if you're Scottish, you can get the bagpipes out because there's been a tremendous result in Norway for the Scottish team under Walter Smith. Norway won, Scotland two. That keeps Scotland's slim admittedly hopes of qualification in that group alive Kenny Miller of Wolves the hero against Italy on Saturday scored both goals tonight that's up here for a foul by Carragher Northern Ireland's first attack really and here Cragen will go forward to help the two best headers of the ball in the attack who are Quinn and Elliot Capaldi will take it Came out to uh, Johnson. Back in again by Hughes. It was a very poor free kick by Capaldi. The first free kick you get, you, you know, you want to really make a, a England have to defend that situation. It was a, a disappointing uh, ball into the box by Capaldi. It nearly worked in, in Northern Ireland's favour because it fell to the edge of the box to Damien Johnson, I think, who, uh, who, who miscued it. Capaldi had the misfortune to uh, give the ball away for the first goal. I remember at uh, Old Trafford when England scored three in six minutes in the second half, four in 16 in fact as well. Which all uh, came in a bit of a rush as Northern Ireland were concerned after they held England to half time. In goes Healy there, and I think the man who felt that was Lampard. Anyway, play goes on, Lampard's down, and this is Ashley Cole. down Frank Lampard yeah he's hurt himself there I think he may have got a boot just below the shin pad and, and the top of his foot and he's, he's you know Frank's quite a tough lad so I think he must have really felt the uh, the full brunt of that challenge 
it was Healy who came in there and uh, certainly made contact. You see David Beckham getting stuck in and then, and then the, the, the foot of Healy came through, actually came through onto the top of Frank Lampard's knee. And when you've got a stud on, straight on your kneecap, it's extremely painful, but, but hopefully he hasn't broken the skin. Um, you know, the pain will settle down, he'll, he'll be back on in a few minutes. Frank Lampard, who's at the moment on a terrific run of consecutive Premiership appearances, the best by an outfield player, and uh, doesn't get injured very often, never seems to miss a game, and now Sven Joran Eriksson, who did say this week that he thought Lampard had made a slowish start to the season by his standards, sees him coming off for further treatment from Gary Lewin. So England for the moment are down to ten men here as they defend a long throw. It's come back out to Keith Gillespie and now to Chris Baird. Bit of anxiety on the England uh, bench here about Lampard down below us. Long throw by Baird looking for Quinn. Here's Michael Owen. Ashley Cole. Two or three of the medical staff attending to Lampard down there. Here's Rio Ferdinand to clear. Beckham, nice touch, right Phillips. But Lampard's now back on his feet and trotting down the touchline. Comes back on. Gets a touch, in fact. About injuries, does, does that one he's going to shake on quickly? Do you think? Well, it depends. Obviously, you know, if you get a, a clean impact on the knee, it's painful, but then it does settle down. I mean, the, the, the thing is, if, if you've actually done any tissue damage or, or cut yourself, then obviously that has to be looked at. But seeing him back on the pitch, I think it's the sort of injury that will run off. It's the right knee that's uh, troubled him. Here's Healy. 18 goals, Northern Ireland's record scorer, the number nine, David Healy from Leeds United. kick not from there surely <laughs> Gerard pulled back <laughs> Gary was uh, talking about the nuances of qualification what happens in the World Cup in Europe as Sean Wright Phillips chases this ball here with Capaldi is that the group winners go through automatically and the two best runners up and that's based on points you've accumulated and England and Poland for that matter are quite well placed to achieve one of those two positions in fact as I said or as Gary said if England win here and beat Austria then Ericsson's team are in the finals this is Ferdinand against Capaldi you know yeah certainly uh, he's getting he's, he's getting himself into a really good position where Capaldi has to watch the ball but he also has to try and look over his left shoulder and, and watch Sean Wright Phillips who hugs the touchline now that gives David Beckham the opportunity to hit quite a bit of space either in behind the defender or in front of him to Wright Phillips and we all know Sean Wright Phillips is very good when he's running at people at pace and if he if he gets that chance you know sooner or later he's going he's gonna to make use of that speaks a multi-capped international left back <laughs> but uh, Capaldi actually to be fair to him is it probably a better player coming forward I mean he had a terrific game in uh, Cardiff when Ireland drew 2-2 with nine men he was man of the match that night actually in the millennium and I've seen him play for Plymouth as well yeah, he's a very decent player he's, he's, um, he's had a good run in the national team and at the club level as well 
This is Gerard Bringer. Rooney making a run down the left-hand side, cut out by Baird. Not easy when you're playing reserve team football, which Chris Baird is at the moment at Southampton. A couple of moves or proposed moves fell through for him just before the deadline. That's Quinn, but he's been penalised for backing in. That's a little bit harsh on James Quinn. I think he's paying the penalty for some of Northern Ireland's early sort of quite hard tackles, and the ref uh, has given Jamie Carragher the benefit of the doubt there on a slightly dubious free kick. Or James Quinn um, missed the old traffic game because he was suspended. But uh, he and uh, Ferdinand have met before when uh, Quinn was at Blackpool and Ferdinand was on loan at Bournemouth. Here's Frank Lampard. Oh. Away from Davis, looking for Wright Phillips. Oh, handball given. Against Wright Phillips. Yeah, you can see that Capaldi is, is, is struggling for pace against Sean Wright Phillips and I think Sean Wright Phillips felt he could, uh, he could close the ball down. A little bit unfortunate, he's obviously jumped and naturally your hands go up and, and maybe it's just caught him under the arm slightly. First came here to see England play in 1977 when the uh, security presence was quite overwhelming at the height of the troubles, but uh, Belfast, I would say, as evidence of this, took a rather more serene place these days. The people have given us and the England followers a terrific welcome here. It's a throw into Northern Ireland on the far side. Elliot, who is also quite useful in the air, is jogging around the six-yard line. That's trying to get a flick on against Luke Young. Quite a few connections between these two nations, other than the obvious ones. So Laurie Sanchez is the present manager. Laurie McMenemy was manager here for a while as well as being assistant manager of England, of course, under Graham Taylor. And Sonny McElroy took over. And we always remember Billy Bingham, who led Northern Ireland to two World Cups in the 80s. Probably the most famous goal in Northern Ireland's history, that one by Jerry Armstrong against Spain. And Jerry's a really enthusiastic member of the coaching team again here now. minutes in this World Cup qualifier. Northern Ireland nil, England nil, but a great win for Scotland in Norway. Here's Becker with the free kick. Cole. Rooney. This pitch is quite narrow, Graham. Um, it hasn't been narrowed, as some people mistakenly thought when they saw it yesterday, but it's uh, Linfield play on a wider pitch when they have the club games here. Here's Rooney. Owen. Typical Michael Owen position and turn. Get a defender the shot. Yeah, that was England's first sort of real good bit of interplay. Um, well built up. Michael Owen on the edge of the box. Good first touch. And it's just just blocked there. Um, you know, to, to, took the pressure off the off the shot, the weight off the shot, and it was easy for Mike Taylor to collect. I must just add that. Uh, announcement here assures me this is the FIFA measurement for an international pitch this is Wright Phillips taking on Capaldi Owen Northern Ireland taking their time to get this one away it's only as far as Beckham when they do Lampard plays it to Rooney showing a flamboyant attitude coming forward from the back tonight. He certainly is. Once he gets a, a head of steam up, he's off, you know, and uh, he's confident enough. He's played in a lot of different positions, so I think he's fairly comfortable coming forward with the ball. And with David Beckham playing that sort of pivotal role, he knows that they've always got numbers behind him to, to cover his uh, position in that. Beckham again looks first and foremost for right for Hitsu. Just stumbled a bit there as he went past Capaldi. 
another fantastic pass by David Beckham and Sean Mark Phillips they've obviously been working on this Sean Mark Phillips has got so much confidence in, in, in the quality of David Beckham's passing that he's already on the move when David Beckham receives it which gives the defender a nightmare yeah, I think Beckham probably will naturally look right rather than left in that position but uh, we should see how much they can get Rooney into the game on this side this is Carragher Rooney down the left-hand side. We welcome our uh, viewers from BBC Scotland who've uh, just, I'm sure, had a terrific time watching the game in Norway. They've now been to our audience here in Belfast. Well, the centre has been told to go back into the perimeter box there by the fourth official from Switzerland. He's got a bit overexcited. He came out onto the pitch because James Quinn didn't win a... Uh... Well, a 50-50 tackle for Wayne Rooney, and uh, I think that would be one of the things he'd be expecting of his players. Chris Baird has conceded a corner, a long pass by Ferdinand was arrowing towards Rooney there. So Beckham will come across and take the corner from the left. Lampard, Ferdinand and Carragher forming a trio on the far side of the box. to Wright Phillips. This is Luke Young with Healy scampering up behind him. Getting there. Good closing down by the centre forward. Capaldi with the cross. Davis is well forward here for Ireland. disadvantage for England of playing on as you refer to a narrow pitch earlier is that they find it hard to get the space um, to, to get their passing movements going and I think that's playing into Northern Ireland hands slightly they're able to get numbers behind the ball and, and, and congest the pitch really here's Gerard. Beckham this time picks out Cole this is Gillespie the other way towards Wright Phillips he's getting a terrific amount of ball Beckham isn't he? He certainly is and he's reveling in the role as well I think he's taking the responsibility with his quality of passing I think already you know we've played 20 minutes and you've, you've had probably eight David Beckham passes that are, that are textbook passes you know the quality of which you know is, is you can't appreciate how technically difficult that is because he makes it look so easy but that's the, the, the position that he's been given allows him to, to take the time to make that pass and you really get the sense that, that this whole sort of team is built around him people move move out the way so he can get the ball they pass the ball to him whenever they get the chance and he's got to, he's, he's got to prove effective in doing this by not only making wonderful passes but making effective wonderful passes so we're so used to seeing him wide right for England but we ought to point out that in his first season at Real Madrid he played almost exclusively in central midfield on this side Rooney oh that's dribbling through possibly to Cole not quite Aaron Hughes there having to uh, step in something of an emergency for Ireland this is an offside against Gerard. yeah that's frustrating for Steve Dodd I think talking about the Beckham situation I think where England and Sven Jorn Eksen have to be a little bit careful with this formation is, is that they don't then uh, take away the qualities that Frank Lampard and Steven Gerrard bring to the team. Both wonderful players in their own rights, both do fantastically well for their clubs. And in a sense, you're sort of sacrificing some of their qualities by giving David Beckham that role. Now, that's fine if, if, if they can adapt into a different position. But if they can't, then it leaves them you know, with a certain amount of frustration and, and little to be involved with. It's Sean Wright for the England. He's really going at Aaron Hughes here in the box. And Hughes gets a block and it's a corner to England. 
Well, right, Phillips. He's relishing the chance to get on the ball here and get down the flank. As his father was saying to us beforehand, doesn't get phased by the big occasion. Taking on the Northern Ireland captain here. And uh, England happy with the corner, which uh, David Beckham is about to take. Jamie Carragher fell over there. This is Ferdinand. Luke Young staying tight. Damien Johnson. pushing on alongside uh, the main striker in fact uh, Rooney's in the centre as well here Owen's not quite involved at that end of the field just at the moment he's trotting up there now here's Wright Phillips that was an excellent excellently timed tackle by uh, Capaldi um, and he, he managed to win the ball and take Sean Mark Phillips out as well but Sean Mark Phillips is a tough little character must take after his father in that respect because he's picked himself up and he's looking to get the ball again already right father right son here's um, Lampard and now it's Gerrard and England have got good movement here again Owen going in on the near post Taylor, the goalkeeper for Northern Ireland, was 34 last Sunday. It's his 48th cap. So England with the greatest share of the play here. To Rooney. Rooney's gone rather more central this last two or three minutes. Graham? That's right, he hasn't, hasn't had much of the ball out on the left, and, and although he plays a free roll, he's predominantly stuck out to the left in the first 15, 20 minutes. But now he's starting to move inside, looking looking for the ball, and again, with, with the qualities that he has, it gives him an excellent opportunity just to, to find difficult positions and, and arrive on well-timed runs and, and cause Northern Ireland defenders problems. Steve McLaren came out there and made a gesture which suggests to me that they feel on the bench even they're playing a bit too deep. Well, it seems that seems that way slightly because you see, you know, David Beckham has picked the ball up well inside his own half on a number of occasions. Obviously, his distribution has been good, but ultimately it hasn't resulted in it. Only once in uh, 11 meetings in qualifying matches of Northern Ireland not lost to England there was a nil-nil draw which all Irishmen will remember in 1985 at Wembley Pat Jennings came out of semi-retirement to play it was uh, the point Ireland needed to qualify for Mexico England were already there here's Owen right Phillips forward by Gerrard here he is again James passes with Young, David Beckham, tackled there by James Quinn. Rooney, gets past Johnson, great strength on the ball, Rooney. Now it's Lampard, and Gerrard, and Lampard, the block was by Hughes. More than likely limited England's chances, and again there, Frank Lampard, he's got a wonderful strike, but it's 35 yards out, and you've got eight Northern Irish players behind the ball, so, again, you know, Northern Ireland will be looking at, at this situation, I'm sure, sure Laurie Sanchez will be very satisfied with how his team have started the match. Here's Carrigan, again, right, Phillips is coming in on the far side, so he's young here. And he's gone down, and it's going to be a free kick to England not the area of the pitch that uh, Northern Ireland would want to concede one. That was always going to be a foul, this. I think Luke Young, he's, he's already got his eye on on Davis, and it's a high, high foot studs into the leg, and uh, obviously a free kick, and a very dangerous situation for England to hopefully you know, get a shot on target. Well, it's always dangerous here when Beckham's around, isn't it? 
and uh, it was Steve Davis of Aston Villa who gave away the, the uh, free kick, the foul on Young. Everybody else apart from Beckham has walked away from the ball. A bit of mingling in the wall by Rooney. And Beckham to curl one! Oh, gets the bar. My tape was going across it, I don't think he would have got to it. It's hard to say because the amount of whip that David Beckham gets on the ball, the amount of curl, it sort of comes into the goal very late, so a goalkeeper's actually got, got to get past his post almost to stop it going in. You can see it's swinging in. It's actually hit the sort of the, the upright between crossbar and post. What they call the postage stamp. There you go. Well, they used to. <laughs> <laughs> That's forward by Davis. And uh, Beckham then supplying the first really defining moment of the game. Here's Rooney. Gerard making a forward run. Here's Lampard. Found him. But uh, he couldn't return the compliment, Gerard. And Ireland have possession here with Davis, but not for long. This is going to be Ireland's problem, getting enough of the ball to service uh, Quinn and Healy there. That's right, after 25 minutes, 71% of the possession, I think, to England. And they carry on dominating like this. Eventually, they will open Northern Ireland up. Well, Northern Ireland are diving in a bit here. Frank Lampard, or has a yellow card been shown there? Frank Lampard was the player who was fouled. And that's uh, Damien Johnson of Birmingham City, number eight, who has been given the yellow card. I think he's already served one suspension in this group for two yellows. So, Beckham puts the ball down 30 yards out. Maybe a bit more. Three in the wall. Hit the bar last time. Can he get it over the wall from here, I wonder? Just need to. Chipped in. But, uh, this is Rooney. Lampard. Still up there following the free kick. And covering here was Cole. Lampard out to Young. Famous play by England there is given uh, Johnson possession. Now Elliott, who's pretty much to get into the game yet on that left hand side. Prolific scorer for Hull City last season. Here's Beckham. Rooney. Owen following up. It's still Rooney. And Lampard trying to get this. No, he can't. Wayne Rooney will be disappointed with himself there. Frank Lampard made an excellent run around him. And Wayne Rooney just took it one step too much. I think he tried to commit the defender to, to leaving Frank and stepping forward. He gets the ball well here. Quite lucky with the break, but then he should have passed the ball there, but he holds on to it too long. Frank Lampard has to stop his run, otherwise he's going to be offside. By the time the ball's played, it's beyond the reach of, uh, of Frank. And uh, unfortunately for Wayne Rooney, it's one of, one of his uh, rare bad decisions that he's made when in possession of the ball. He's normally a fantastic decision. News, news from Warsaw, uh, where John Toshak's men are defending stoutly against Poland by the sound of it. Poland nil, Wales nil after half an hour. Wales could do it. Oh, it's half-time, in fact, now there, so nothing's happened even in the last 15 minutes. Nil-nil, Poland-Wales, that could do England a favour, of course, if Wales could take something from the Poles. Here's Gillespie. Match is all over Europe, well, all over the world, actually, this week, in World Cup qualification. We'll be showing you at the end of the programme who's already got through to Germany. Is Baird with the throw for Northern Ireland. Quinn's in there, and the header out. Goodness me, that was a half chance really on the turn. It's come back to Capel. It was Healy who had the shot, but he's offside this time. His first chance was the better one there. It certainly was. I think uh, England obviously have to be very careful when when they've got so much possession. Very easy to switch off. You get a, a situation with Chris Baird on the throw in wide right. He's got a long throw aiming for James Quinn. They get a, a, a sort of Jamie Carragher actually flicks it on. Falls to Healy and, and Rio Ferdinand does well to block the first attempt. Unfortunately for England, Healy's offside on the second. 
Now the referee is coming across to speak to the fourth official. Maybe something on the touchline there that's concerning. In fact, the fourth official has now gone running down to speak to... Uh, We'll get, we'll get a clue in a minute what that's all about, I hope. Here's uh, Gillespie. Quinn. Gillespie again. of life he was at Leicester for a couple of seasons his careers take one or two uh, turns Keith Gillespie formerly Manchester United and Newcastle of course but he won't be able to do much about that it's a corner to England which uh, Beckham will take for the left hand side Rio Ferdinand makes a run across Healy to latch onto the loose ball here. Coles followed him across the pitch. And dispossessed him. Okay. Decent little pass from Luke Young. This is Frank Lampard. Right across to Beckham. Quinn poised to make a run to the near post here. Delivery, Graham. Disappointing. Not quite as good if he'd been as, it, as if he'd been naturally left-footed, but I'm not going to complain because my right foot's nothing like his. <laughs> so um, I think David Beckham had a chance there to actually bring the ball inside and maybe have a shot himself, but uh, he chose to try and be provider again. And uh, I, I really feel that you know, again, if you continue to get him on the ball, you know, he'll, he'll cause more damage. This match is following a very similar pattern to the first one at Old Trafford last March. This was. The way of it in the first half there, and Northern Ireland held out till just after the break. And then the floodgates open. Here's Davis. Down the middle goes Healy. Cut off by Carrigan. Gerrard. Seventh consecutive victory in qualifying matches tonight. It really has been Ericsson's Metier winning these qualifiers. If not uh, going on from there to win trophies, but uh, hopefully that might change. This is Johnson. We have ten minutes left in the first half at Windsor Park. start to get a sense of Northern Ireland's limitations you see Healy and Quinn up front they isolated neither of them are particularly quick so even though they're playing quite long passes trying to get in behind the England back four it's pretty difficult for them because they've got the pace to actually outrun anybody and that results in the fact that they've got to just keep playing passes hopeful passes or passes in front of England's defence. England of course had to be patient in Cardiff didn't they before the Joe Cole goal Having to be patient again here, and in fact, for the moment, having to defend because Chris Baird with the long throw, Elliot's drifting across the box here. It's Quinn's in there too. It's come out to Beckham. Well, Luke Young there was pulled up. It's uh, not going to be. Uh, free kick though, it's a throw in, he just didn't quite get hold of the ball there and uh, Northern Ireland using these long throws to try to get the ball when they can on the head of Quinn but he was so well marked there, they, they just chose another option and here comes uh, Paul Robinson who's hardly had anything to do Rooney, stopped by Johnson free kick to Northern Ireland again this is we've seen this a few times with Wayne Rooney with England certainly he gets frustrated because he's not getting the foot, the ball. And Wayne Rooney is, is ha at his happiest when he's involved in the game, in every minute of the game. And so far, I can, can only think of a couple of occasions that he's had the ball and he's made the wrong selections. He's getting frustrated. And again, he's starting to sort of uh, show that animatedly to the 
to the referee and to the to the uh, assistant referee as well. Well, he was guilty of shirt pulling there and has to be a little bit careful because another yellow card tonight would rule Rooney out of the Austria game. This is taken by Baird. Right across towards Elliott. Cragen stays forward. Chance maybe for Quinn. And because it came back off Ferdinand, uh, Robinson had to kick. Right Phillips with Owen making a run through that channel. Right Phillips again. when the fixture this came out that Wales and Northern Ireland would really dig in in their home games and make life difficult for England and that's uh, precisely what's happening Frank Lampard to Jamie Carragher for England now, Rio Ferdinand's on the ball, he hasn't really got any options, he's got, he's got passes on, but they're all dangerous passes. This is Wright Phillips, he's got Gerrard to his right, he's got Owen to his left, Sean Wright Phillips, running into a number of green shirts there, it was uh, Davis who finally got the ball away, here he is again now looking for Healy, he's marked by Carrigan. Like I say, with England with the formation, they've got so many people close to the ball. You've got little passes there by Frank Lampard, round the corner to Sean Wright Phillips, but you've never got, they're not really going anywhere with these passes. They've got to be a little bit more direct and get forward runners so they can try and break the lines of the Northern Irish defence in midfield. Lampard forward to Gerrard, now Beckham joining in. Gerrard again, he's got... Cole coming up on this side, Michael Owen darting forward, that's a poor cross by Ashley Cole's standards. That's disappointing but sort of feeling sorry for Ashley Cole in a little way because he looks up, perfect opportunity to put in an excellent ball, but he looks up, he's got, he's trying to hit, hit a space that's virtually impossible to hit because he's only got Michael Owen who's making the best effort he can to get into the box, so again, you're getting a good wide position, some good interplay, but ultimately Ashley Cole's under, under pressure to provide a pinpoint cross over concentrates and kicks the ball out for a simple goal kick for Northern Ireland. Well, Ericsson uh, hasn't come up with the answer yet, or his team haven't. Five minutes left in the first half as Quinn there grapples and Elliott gets in for Northern Ireland on the far side. Young trying to shut him down, this is Davis. And now it's Capaldi, and that's come out to Johnson, they've got green shirts forward here, but uh, Healy there didn't get the right contact on that pass. Rooney. That frustration again by Wayne Rooney, really, he completely wasted the free kick. He certainly did, and um, he's showing his youth, Wayne, you know, and he, he's, had, he's had plenty of opportunity to, to learn from sort of, you know, mistakes, but it's, it's one, of these, one of these situations where you know, I have a great sympathy for him, because as I've said, he's, he, just wants to, he just wants to play football, he wants to be involved all the time, and he's lost his discipline. Graham, it's a yellow card, it's a yellow card for Rooney. It, Beckham's trying to cool him down, he's in trouble here, he's out of the next game, Wayne Rooney against Austria and he's lost it for the moment, absolutely lost it, with opponents, with teammates and with the officials. Beckham, as you watch the replay, he's used his arm grey and there can be no excuse for that. And actually he's forcing him to get away with a yellow card, I mean I, I had sympathy with him up until that point and then obviously, you know, complete lack of discipline and, you know, quite quite frankly, it's, it's you know, the, the, the fact that he's just, he can't control that side of his game and, and, and he's his position, the, the quality that he has, he needs to be able to do that, he really needs to learn. Well, more of Rooney in a minute, let's just deal with the free kick first, which uh, Capaldi will take with his left foot, Quinn is right in there, so it's Cragen, Elliot jumping now, well now this is back to the Spain game, wasn't it, when Wayne Rooney had a burst of temperament and Sven-Jorn Eriksson brought him off, substituted him, 
now he's Mr. Angry again, ruled out of the next qualifier for two yellow cards and uh, treading right on the edge here, Graham. Yeah, he is. Um, you know, I, by myself when I played, I, I was very animated, aggressive in certain situations. And it's, it is hard when, 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 you, when you lose control on the pitch. It's such an emotional game and we play with passion. And you don't want to take that away from the player. So it's a constant battle trying to deal with it and keeping it under wraps. But you've got to contribute to your team. You know, you can't, you can't just try and keep the world by yourself. Well, unfortunately, he seems to be taking the world on at the moment. And uh, dare I suggest that part of this frustration could be because he's stuck out here on the left wing. Well, certainly, I think... As I said before about Stephen Gerrard and Frank Lampard, playing David Beckham in that in that position is fine. If, if, if Stephen Gerrard, Frank Lampard, and in this case Wayne Rooney, feel that they can contribute in a way to the game. If you take away these guys' qualities, they're all exceptional players, and you're not doing them a, you're doing them a disservice by not allowing them to play their stuff. Quinn getting up there, it nearly fell for Healy. And Northern Ireland are very much in the fight at the moment. Um, free kick here to uh, to England and um, at the moment I think it'll be better for Rooney when half time comes it certainly will give him a chance to actually take a new perspective on, on the last 10 minutes of the game get in, get his head down have some water, whatever he needs to do and just reassess the situation because he's not doing himself any favours and he's better than that, that's the frustrating thing he's a wonderful player, he doesn't need to make things more complicated for himself Beckham really did take some time out to uh, try and get hold of Rooney when that happened as the captain and I'm sure there'll be things said by Ericsson and uh, McLaren in the dressing room at half time and anyway Northern Ireland here with three players backing into the penalty area Elliot's there Quinn and Healy this is Quinn making a nuisance of himself Gerard with a half clearance now Rooney he won't get that one either and there's an England injury on the edge of the area Gerard, I think. I'm not convinced, John. I must admit, I look at the players and I, I just don't see, you know, they don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like they're comfortable doing what they're, you know, with the detail they've been given. It, and it's it's obviously frustrating for them. I think Northern Ireland are going to go in if they can remain nil-nil uh, till half-time. They're going to go in very satisfied. Absolutely. And the, the system, as you say, it's Gerard now, though. Owen's in the middle, and Owen with a chance here, overhead kick, oh, straight at Taylor. England's clearest scoring chance of the half for Michael Owen. That was a great play by Stephen Gerrard, bursting forward from midfield. Michael Owen's good first touch, is up in the air, and he's just had a gamble. He's not made the best contact on that, but with an overhead kick, you never know what's going to happen. Unfortunately for Mike Taylor, he's straight into his palms and saved it comfortably. One minute of overtime to be played at the end of this first half. Gillespie on the ball for Northern Ireland, takes on goal and beats it, and then carries on. This is Healy. Now Johnson, Elliott's coming in from the far side. Doesn't win it, though. safely say coming up to half time that this England system has not been a roaring success <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination the two highlights, well I say highlights the two moments that Sven and Eriksson may dwell on David Beckham did hit the angle of crossbar and uh, post with a free kick and Wayne Rooney then lost his temper got booked, got suspended from the next game and then had to be calmed down by colleagues and as they walk off Gerrard has gone to Rooney to have a few uh, consoling words third Ferdinand coming up alongside him, Rooney still looking furious. But for Northern Ireland and Laurie Sanchez, who's just uh, checking on his watch there, he must feel pretty satisfied with his team's performance out there. They've done exactly what he asked them to do, and they've really not only contained England, they've frustrated them, and nobody more so than this man. And as he goes off to what might be a bit of a wigging in the dressing room, or certainly uh, some close attention, uh, the half-time situation at Windsor Park, Belfast in Group 6 of the World Cup qualifying competition in Europe. 
is Northern Ireland nil, England nil. And the battling draw is still on him. Yeah, we've got, I think it's very important the first 15 minutes. Got to start with the same tempo. Try and I'll turn them early, make sure they stretch the game for them. Don't let us get pressed back and, and try and keep in their faces for sure for 10 minutes. Okay. Are, he's winding me up, they're getting on my nerves a bit. <laughs> uh, we just saw Wayne Rooney stays on the pitch. He looks a little bit calmer. I'm sure the same is true of Graham Lasso and John Motson. <laughs> well, we hope so, Gary. Yeah, um, just a couple of things. Uh, Rooney, as I understood it from Sven Joran Eriksson, I did ask him this question this morning, was not told to play wide on the left by the touchline. The idea was for him to play closer to Owen than that, whereas Wright Phillips on the other side was told to stay wide. And the other little thing, as we are these talking to... Uh, is Joey Armstrong there as they walk down the, the side there, Sven Jorn Eriksson. I think uh, that Scotland group, I just strike a cautionary note there because if Slovenia win that game in Moldova where they're leading, I think you'll find that Scotland will be back in third place anyway, we'll see. And um, quite a few well known characters around. There's Billy Bingham. Um, two World Cups, as I said. Once got married on the same day Northern Ireland played at Wembley, I remember. And uh, Northern Ireland now have got to get past the 47th minute because that's when Joe Cole opened the scoring at Old Trafford back in March. Two minutes into the second half and then they collapsed. Something that they'll be doing their level best not to uh, repeat tonight. And the, also the mystery about the fourth official. The referee was concerned because the giant video screen in one corner of the pitch here replayed an incident which he didn't want for some reason to uh, be shown to the crowd. It had some one of his perhaps more contentious decisions and he asked the fourth official to stop them showing that kind of replay on the screen but don't worry we'll show you them all here <laughs> probably more than once as well anyway this is Beckham for England spreading it wide and now Rooney won't, well he won't get that because he has come inside you thought maybe, Graham, that Joe Cole would be introduced if things didn't get any better? Well, I certainly think if it continues this way, they'll be looking for, for fresh legs, and Joe Cole, you know, great individual ability that it has, um, has, has maybe done a little bit better in the recent games on the left-hand side than, than you know, the frustration that we've seen of Wayne Rooney tonight. But I'm glad to see Wayne Rooney back on the pitch for the second half. Uh, I, I think it's always a shame when players are taken off at half-time for those sort of decisions. He's got a chance to prove that it's all sort of behind him. Yes, I don't think Ericsson likes taking the high-profile players off in competitive games. He does it often enough in friendlies. This is uh, Wright Phillips to Young. Goes to Beckham. It's cold to Lampard. Healy penalised. I think Alan Hansen made a great point at half-time about best players playing in their best positions and something I was trying to allude to during the game, the first half, that, that you know, the quality that we have on there, these players are at their absolute peak and we should be getting the best out of them by encouraging them to play and do what they're good at. This is one off the Lampard. Good cross, headed away by Aaron Hughes from Owen. Good defending by the uh, Northern Ireland captain. Nice build-up play by England there, Lampard combining with Gerrard. Some good passing and nice little clip pass to the far post, but unfortunately it's just a little bit short for Wayne Rooney. And comfortable headed back by Chris Baird, who did excellent there, just cushioning it down for Mike Taylor. So Northern Ireland have held out for longer than they did in the first game. And, uh, still getting to the ball, getting to the tackle. Davis, as they were instructed to do by Ronnie Sanchez. Owen, not given time really to collect the ball. Hughes at his back all the time. They're like ships in the night, those two. Owen's just joined Newcastle and Hughes has just left Newcastle to uh, go to Aston Villa. Oh, 
Owen playing an international with Newcastle United after his moment yesterday made his debut. Such is the nature of our, our business. Here he is now. They'll be a uh, free kick to England. They'll be uh, waiting with bated breath for that first appearance on Tyne's side on Saturday against Fulham. And it goes to Rooney from Beckham. Owen following up. Beckham was knocked over there by uh, Davis. Northern Ireland's concentration has to be 110% all the time. It's a point the coach made to them yesterday. Here's Rooney. Young. Right, uh, right Phillips. That's a Northern Ireland throw too. played in Belfast the two previous qualifiers here between the two teams haven't been that easy for England either there's been a 2-0 and a 1-0 remember Mark Hately scoring here in a single goal victory in the 80s now Ferdinand's going to let that off didn't take a chance there leaving it for Robinson because Quinn's quite a handful difficult ball actually the ball was quite lofted had a bit of backspin on it and uh, I think when it bounced rather than bouncing through to Paul Robinson it bounced off in the air and landed almost in between them we're only trying to chase the ball down here this is Gillespie It's a free kick to Northern Ireland. This could spell a bit of danger for England. They've got uh, Quinn, Elliott and, and uh, the centre-back as well, Cragen, who are all handy in the air. He's coming up on the back of the three there. overhead and the chance is gone really that's disappointing for Northern Ireland you know they're not going to get many opportunities to deliver um, good set pieces in dangerous areas and again the first set piece of either the first half or the second half is crucial and it's wasted you know Keith Gillespie's got completely under the ball leant back as he struck it and, and it's gone fly past for a, for a goal kick easy for him so far so good for Laurie Sanchez Jamie Carragher oh he should have been given a free kick there, but uh, he didn't get it. This is Gillespie. Baird. No, it's Gerard in the way. Now Carragher tries to release his former club mate, Michael Owen. John is that even if England go on to win this game and win it comfortably I think people would be taking the opinion that they're not convinced by the way the team are playing the way they're approaching the game the way individuals are playing and, and it's, it's easy to criticize individual players and you know, maybe say they're not working hard but they seem to be getting to the ball late they seem to be not following their runners they seem not to quite understand as I've said before really what they're meant to be doing and that's, that's a worry Free kick to Northern Ireland, Joe Cole preparing to come on. Cragen forward again, so of course is Quinn. That is Quinn now. And headed back across, and Robinson under pressure from uh, Elliot there. It wasn't an easy ball really, Stuart Elliot got right into the thick of it, underneath the crossbar with Robinson. The situation where the ball's bouncing around and, you know, goalkeepers having to come out and, and, and really risk himself to, to, to get the ball it's um, it's hard to see well, yeah. it's 
a lottery really, you never know quite what's going to happen. Now then, we did say that Ericsson wouldn't take off one of his high-profile players. I don't mean that Sean Wright Phillips isn't, because he will be one day, but he's the easy man to go off, really. And Joe Cole has come on. So, 16 Cole. Now, Graham, explain to me how he fits into the system now. Well, Joe Cole obviously um, is going to play, I would think, slightly narrower than Sean Wright Phillips. He's not got the pace that, that Sean Wright Phillips has. He, he may be happier coming off the line a little bit more, so may, possibly trying to link up a little bit more with Michael Owen. And he is, of course, on his natural side on, on the right, is he not having played on the left and having to come inside when we've seen him before? He, he is, but I thought, you know, quite honestly, I thought he's done all right when he's yeah. played on the left. So, um, you know, again, it's, a, it's another change, uh, another, another position for Joe to play, another position for players around him to, to sort of try and work out what his qualities are, get the ball from the right areas. Well, he scored the goal in Cardiff on Saturday with the help of a Gabidon deflection, but it was Cole's goal. And he'll be dead keen to do that again here. He's on the ball now. But it's Davis of Northern Ireland who brings it away and he finds Healy. Quinn coming in from the far side and Davis goes in on the near post. Robinson claims. Certainly punching above their weight, Northern Ireland. They're giving a good account of themselves and, and looking dangerous in going forward now. Not an attempt to fake, but there is an air of authority about the England goalkeeper, isn't there, Paul Robinson? He's growing in the job. Certainly he's confident, you can see that just in the way he expresses himself, the way he comes to collect balls, the way he kicks the ball as well, which is very important. And that's, that's crucial for a goalkeeper. Here's Cole, Joe Cole. Owen waiting in the centre. Gerard is there too, he's got it, back to Rooney. Defenders shutting down Rooney's shot. This is Beckham. Joe Cole. Owen near post, and that just drips away. That's an excellent ball by Joe Cole. He's had two attacks there, two good crosses, one to the far post, and then and, and then the second one where he's checked back, swung at him with his left foot. And quite frankly, Mike Taylor in that position, the ball's coming into him, he doesn't know whether to come and try and collect it, or if somebody's arriving, they've got every chance of just getting in front of him and nicking, him in, nicking a goal at the near post. Steve McLaren is making some frantic signals from the edge of the England tent perimeter by the touchline. I don't quite know whether that's to try and... Um, you know, Graham, don't you? Yeah, Wayne Rooney, I think they're trying to get Wayne Rooney to play as maybe an orthodox striker, as, as, he, as he would do... 4-4-2, I think he's looking to maybe try and get him just to play slightly behind the What with Gerard moving out to the left? He looks that way. Here's Quinn. Oh, wasn't a bad effort, was it? Wasn't a bad effort. Oh, great teamwork there by me and you, I think. And I spotted the Rooney bit, you spotted the Gerard bit. Well, that's what we're played for, mate. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> we better not get into that. Listen, James Quinn here, 40th cap tonight, four goals for Northern Ireland. And uh, really, coming out of League Two, he's... Um, probably playing above his, his normal well he is, his normal weekly station here but uh, he's got a bit about him this is uh, Lampard for England to Cole forward by Ferdinand Cole is in behind Capaldi here there's a the flag up got too far Yeah, he just makes his run. It's a good run. S slightly missed time, but I mean, you, you know, you've got to give him the benefit of the doubt because it's a, it's a very well timed run and just, just fractionally offside. Yeah, Rooney's definitely playing more central now. There's no question about that. Although Gerard hasn't really gone left. In fact, at the moment, there isn't a, a left side player at all. I'd say that hasn't been for years, John. Well, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, it did occur to me. But uh, actually, Cole left the slot into that when he gets, as he is now, when he gets the chance to come forward. This is Beckham. Joe Cole. Again, it can, can become confusing because there's a lot of um, a lot of talking between Steve McLaren, David Beckham, other players on the pitch. Yes. This is uh, Joe Cole coming inside. Gerard. Ashley Cole. Owen waiting. It's too long for him. Capaldi wasn't sure who was behind him. Yes, it was 
report in Cardiff on Saturday that there was a bit of confusion about how England should readjust when certain changes were made, wasn't there? Well, what you're doing, you're trying to coach people one way and, and work on a system all week or as, uh, however long you've had to prepare for a match. And then suddenly, you know, 25 minutes to go, you're on a bit more pressure to, to obviously get the result. And then not only do you change personnel, but you're changing the formation as well and people have to adapt to that. And it's up to defenders to take a different responsibility. David Beckham now is playing a different role. Steven Gerrard the same. And by making one change, you're actually affecting maybe six or seven different players. We couldn't lip read there, but clearly there's something still going on between Ericsson and McLaren as to what's supposed to be happening out there. This is uh, a free kick to England. Beckham, whose role hasn't changed in the reshuffle. Young. This is Lampard. Ashley Cole. Rooney. Lampard. Oh, there's some flight on that. It's a goal kick, though. Beckham thought it was a corner. In fact, he's certain it is. But the referee's not. Yeah, it was a corner. It, the, the way the ball sort of flew past the post you could just see that it was just bending away he obviously caught a deflection as he hit it good turn by Frank again this is the first time he's been in this sort of position that's a dangerous position for him lots of time on the edge of the box I think it's just caught somebody as it's gone past or Mike Taylor's maybe got a hand to it I'll tell you what I think this is a good save see it's, this is here I think he, that's a brilliant save by Mike Taylor eh? fantastic save you did need to see it a couple of times, but there's no question it was his fingertips that turned the ball round. It should have been a corner, but uh, let's hope he gets a bit of credit for that, because it was a really good piece of goalkeeping. He's an excellent goalkeeper, actually. He's, he's worked hard, really hard. Um, he's, he's in incredibly good shape, and he's he, very athletic for a goalkeeper, and, and has always impressed me in the Premier I saw a lot of him at Barnet, actually, Graham, when Ray Clements was manager there and signed him. Of course, he went on from there to bigger things. Birmingham City now, previously Fulham. This is Lampard. Quinn up against uh, Carrigan. Well, an hour gone. Northern Ireland still holding England at bay. There is Mr. Clements. Happily recovered from his recent illness and back in the England fold. I think I'm right in saying it's race 100th match with England as the goalkeeping coach tonight. Another centurion. To add to what we were saying earlier. Here's Cole. to the left, so does Davis. Now, more than I've ever thrown. I want to ask you a question about Beckham in a minute, but we'll, we'll stay with this because uh, Ireland always look to get something out of these uh, set plays. Quinn and Elliott lining up on the six-yard area. But um, neither one able to get to the ball. Davis with Young now. I mean, and Gary quite rightly made the point that the Beckham passing was a masterclass, but has he been in a position to play what you call the absolute killer ball? And that's exactly it, John. I think, you know, it's, you can't discredit him for his qualities, but he's got to be effective. We said that in the first half. He has to be effective in what he does, and that's creating chances. Here's Quinn. Gillespie on the far side. And now it's Baird. More than I'm going to position here. Back to Gillespie. Turned in. So carry on with what you're saying. Sorry about Beckham. No, I just think that that you know anybody they've got qualities. David Beckham's made a name for himself with his fantastic deliveries, and he has to he has to be able to provide 
from a deeper position those same sort of killer passes. That's, that's what he needs to be able to do. Yellow card here for Capaldi for that last tackle. Plymouth fullback just diving in a bit here and booked. He's got 25 minutes on a yellow card against Joe Cole. I don't, I don't envy him at all. No. No. Looks a bit uh, puzzled, Sven, doesn't he? Biting his nails a bit. It's a motion for you. <laughs> yes, he's not exactly ranting and raving, is he? Uh, <laughs> Ferdinand across to Carrigan. Ferdinand. Oh, it's careless. And it's Quinn. Elliot. And now Beckham. Looking for Joe Cole. That's a nicely delivered ball as well. In the middle of Rooney and Owen. Lampard's joining them now. And Cole does get the ball in, and Taylor comes out and picks it off Owen's head. Once again, he got two relatively short centre forwards there. Wonderful play by Joe Cole, great in swinging ball, but with Michael Owen by himself, more or less, Wayne Rooney arriving, has to be inch perfect. Well, Quinn's uh, pulling Ferdinand's shirt all over the place there. <laughs> and he knows it too. He won't be too bothered about that. Giving a free kick away down there will we'll relieve the uh, Northern Irish defence and get them a little bit of a uh, respite. Here's Lampard. Cole. It's, uh, quite new. It's around him, right? Say the England build-up has been long and laboured at times. I mean, Gary always says that England play better at a higher tempo. They haven't quite got into that tempo tonight, I don't think. This is Ferdinand to Gerard. No, they certainly haven't. They're, you know, a lot of short passes, um, allowing teams to get the nice team, teams to get behind the ball. Owen, will he get a free kick there? And if he does. Could be handy for England this. Johnson penalised. Ferdinand is coming forward. Beck Beckham will take it. Carrick is in there as well. Rooney's header. Just pulled off his marker to... Uh, Meet the cross. Well, we're approaching the halfway point in the second half. Would you envisage another substitution? Well, quite possibly. I mean, in a sense, you sort of... You could ask the question why, you know, maybe with Joe, Joe Cole coming on, why not put him on the on the left-hand side, bring Beckham to the right and play Lampard and Gerrard on, in the middle, as Ericsson has lined them up before, and they seem to be a bit more comfortable doing that. Looking at it now, I sort of think that they'll be looking for another option up front with possibly maybe bringing uh, uh, Michael Owen off um, and bringing on someone like Jermaine Defoe. Yeah, that's an alternative, isn't it? This is uh, Lampard. Of course, Ericsson did say slightly concerned about Owen's lack of match practice recently. This is Joe Cole. Rooney and Owen again looking a little frustrated that that ball didn't come in earlier. This is Beckham. Now Owen makes a run across the box. Beckham picks him out. No, there's a flag up. Offside given. You get the sort of distinct feeling now that, that if England are going to win this game it's going to be down to a piece of individual brilliance as opposed to you know a collectively great piece of work that's, that's born out of the, 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 the system the, the way the team flow when they're in possession and I think you know with Joe, Joe Cole's goal against Wales element of luck about it but you know created 
this this situation, I think it's going to it really is going to boil down to one piece of magic from a quality player that the England team has if we're going to win. Or maybe a mistake by Northern Ireland because they haven't made one yet. Not not a critical one anyway, have they? No, that's true. That's true. Been very focused, Laurie Sanchez's team. Gerard. Now Ashley Cole well forward. That's a, unable to reach that. Well, I don't see too much activity at the moment down on the uh, England bench, nor indeed. As Laurie Sanchez at the moment made an ask, Jermaine Defoe probably had a little bit of exercise. penalty area that's right and then if England do break forward he's in no position to help Cole. in goes Owen oh, he's done well there but Hughes is so oh that's a free kick assistant referee Flags against Hughes. So opportunity again here for England from the set piece. Beckham takes it early. Rooney's waiting. That was quick thinking by David Beckham. Um, and unfortunately, Wayne Rooney didn't quite connect with it. Well, the Irish supporters were hoping for a real buoyant performance from their team tonight they've seen a resilient one that's for sure this is Healy Northern Ireland still have Wales to come here on October the 8th the same day England play Austria you can see both those matches with us and also England Poland on the 12th quite how significant that will be remains to be seen but England aren't exactly uh, going about winning this the first of the two they have to win with this performance this is Gerard Poland a 1-0 up still against Wales here's Gillespie for Ireland Healy out wide oh I oh, thought it was going to be an own goal for a minute Robinson has managed to get to the ball he's injured in the process by the way collided with Quinn but that was a nasty moment for England David Healy pulled wide and the cross is clearly deflected here by an England player and Robinson had to be smart. Yeah, he took a, a kick in the head for, uh, for his bravery there, Paul Robinson. Um, very dangerous play, Healy gets in a good position. As we're talking about, you get any decent player getting behind a defence can cause them problem if they make the right selection. That's a lovely ball across the, the face of England's goal. Slight deflection from Jamie Carragher. But if that's, if that's slightly further back, uh, Quinn has got every opportunity of scoring a goal. Well, it was uh, it's one of the better moments for Northern Ireland, or nearly could have been. This is Beckham's pass, but it's right onto the head of Cragen. Poland leading Wales still, as I said, and then, well, they're two points clear of England at the start of play. These results remain the same. They go four points clear. This is Beckham. Young. Luke Young forces the corner. Another good uh, piece of defending by Aaron Hughes there. Read the situation, saw that Capaldi was in trouble. And Luke, Run, uh, Luke, Luke Young has had a decent, um, a decent performance today again. He has. Now then. Ferdinand with his arm up here. Carragher's in there too. Mike Taylor just comes out. Makes that look easy. 
comfortable for Mike Taylor. They like that sort of thing. It, it makes them look good. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Quinn up against Ashley Cole. First ever match uh, in Belfast between these two was in 1882, would you believe? And I don't think Northern Ireland have been playing football too long there because England won 13 0. Tonight they can't get one. Here's Davis. Oh, he's on the side. Healy for Northern Ireland. Real chance. And he scored. Oh, what a moment for Northern Ireland. David Healy scores their first goal against England for 25 years. Laurie Sanchez's team in the lead. And Belfast and Windsor Park has gone crazy. Let's look at these scenes. And England are embarrassed. Healy, the all-time top scorer writes his name here in the record books were England looking for an offside well there wasn't well it looked it from there but the linesman didn't flag and Healy belted that with his right foot away from Paul Robinson and Northern Ireland won England nil did you ever believe that was possible I certainly didn't that's a fantastic little pass by Davis great first touch by Healy and talk about calm collected finish what power there fantastic finish and quite frankly Northern Ireland deserve um, you know the goal given given the way they've played in the last 20 minutes Terry Cochran the last man to do that in 1980 at Wembley to score for Northern Ireland against England but this goal could be so much more significant and David Healy the lead striker it's his 19th international goal in his 46th match it's a great output when you think how Northern Ireland are often on the defensive now, was he offside, Graham, this side? I don't think he was. Rio Ferdinand is the last man, and he's static. And then David Healy, what a finish that is. Paul Robinson got a hand to it, but what a great finish into the far corner. No, they've got, they've yeah. got so much time on the ball. No wonder this ground is jubilant. We're about ten minutes away, if things stay like this, from Northern Ireland's first win over England in Belfast since 1927. Here's Lampard. I think whatever happens, John, it's it's uh, it's a disaster for England because you know not only today's performance, the way that the team have performed, the lack of understanding that they seem to have. We also look back at the Denmark game a couple a few weeks ago, and you know that's England's worst goal deficit for some time. And it's, it's, it's a frustrating time for everyone involved in it. Well, I, t I tell you what, the press weren't kind to Ericsson after the win in Wales. Goodness knows what they're going to say here if this isn't changed. Jermaine Defoe to come on in place of Steven Gerrard. England are desperate. And the, everything about Steven Gerrard's body language then coming off sums up England's performance, you know. Head down, you know. Yeah, well, here's, listen, England have got to go and try and get a goal, and in doing so, they may leave gaps. That was uh, Damian Johnson. Now the goal scorer, Healy. Elliott's made a long run down the centre. Northern Ireland, well, they're living some sort of dream at the moment. They certainly are, but they've, they've, they've deserved, you know, the, the, the quality of finishing. They've just got behind England on a previous occasion. That's the second time they've gotten behind them. And as I said, what a fantastic finish by David Healy. That's composure. And that, that shows his quality. He needs to get in those positions. But on the other hand, by contrast, England have immense quality. But don't get their players at the moment in those positions to, to, to have goal-scoring opportunities. No, I'll just come on to the Wales game in a minute, Graham, when we've got this free kick taken. Um, Quinn, I mean, England just... It would be horrendous, surely, for them to concede a second. I think Chris Baird may have got a yellow card there for delaying taking that run. That's why I was anxious to get rid of that first. Wales, by the way, are, have lost in uh, Warsaw by one goal to nil. Now, Poland here could go five points clear of England in this group. Defoe on the other end of this, maybe. Owen running on. Free kick to England. Ferdinand was standing absolutely still when uh, Healy ran through to score the goal obviously looking for an offside play and here's Ashley Cole Owen Lampard this is Young to Cole it's 
one out or the crossing has been poor you know really poor that's disappointing for Joe Cole there he did well to get into the position but disappointing with the cross and, and obviously you know lets Northern Ireland off the hook again I'm just trying to work out we seem to have so many players of a similar kind in forward positions it's actually confusing just watching the game you've got Jermaine Defoe Michael Owen Wayne Rooney all playing up front all similar sorts of players all rely, rely on the same sort of possession and, and uh, and quite frankly, you're limiting your options by having those three players all, all on the pitch at the same time, I would suggest. Well, here's going to be a Northern Ireland substitution. Laurie Sanchez is going to send on Warren Feeney, who scored from a penalty against Azerbaijan on Saturday. Warren Feeney, whose father and grandfather both played for Northern Ireland, third generation international, comes on to replace James Quinn. Feeney plays for Luton Town. Well, those are the jubilant Irish fans, the England fans at the other end have been chanting, what a load of rubbish. And I have to also report, some of them shouted, sack the Swede. So there they like are. The newspaper well, I'm afraid it will be, unless uh, England salvaged something in this uh, last 12 minutes or so. It's Gillespie on the ball for Northern Ireland. actually this season for him. He's, he's a lively customer and he'll bring fresh legs up there after Quinn had done an awful lot of donkey work the man who's gone off the, th the thing is they've got the bit between their teeth the Northern Irish the fans are really urging them on you know they, they conceivably they could go on and get another goal it's a corner to Northern Ireland up goes Craven Well, this would be a moment of modern football history. Owen Hargreaves is waiting to come on for England. And it's going to be Frank Lampard. That tells you something. Two other players have come off at Gerrard and Lampard. What's Hargreaves going to do, Graham? That's it. I've got, got a visual there of David Beckham standing with both his hands out by his side looking at the bench asking what why what are we you know what what are we doing now Beckham's moved to the right now Hargreaves is playing a central midfield 10 minutes away Northern Ireland from their first victory over England since 1972 and their first here for getting on for 80 years this is Rooney for England they forced a corner well taken short lobbed back in by Rooney high and hopeful Owens there somewhere it's a fairly scooped effort by uh, Jamie Carragher on his way back to his defensive position We have a score from Dublin, Lansdowne Road, Republic of Ireland nil, France one. Guess the scorer, you've got it, Thierry Henry. That won't help the Republic because four teams were unbeaten in that group before tonight. And they were one of them. Oh, and England are hesitating here and it's going to be a free kick surely. It was Damien Johnson. I think it was Owen Hargreaves who got caught in possession there, or, or got caught the wrong side. Graham? Yeah, this is this is again a sign of sort of England complacency. They, they feel they've got more time on the ball than they ha actually have. And quite frankly, Owen Hargreaves there is, is fortunate enough to get away with uh, just a free kick and hopefully we're not punished for it. Well, hold on a minute, because Healy has put the ball down and he does like a crack at goal, as we've just seen. And uh, England here, well, would you believe this? Eight minutes to go and Northern Ireland having taken the lead now have a free kick Elliot I think has taken over now from Healy and he drives it he scored from a free kick from that position on Saturday but he got more height on the ball then well I tell you what Laurie Sanchez will be given the freedom of uh, the province if, if, this, <laughs> if this stays as it is he certainly will and I know we've criticised England but we've got to give Northern Ireland a lot of credit for the way they've approached the game the tactical side of things as well well sometimes get uh, confused by training sessions but I tell you what I saw them working yesterday Northern Ireland and they did seem really up for it and Sanchez had got a very definite game plan for them 
And that's the exact point there, John, is having a game plan. You can have the best players in the world, but it's a team game. You need to rely on, on the team at certain stages. You can't just rely on individuals. Individuals have to work together. And this is a great example of Northern Ireland, all their weaknesses in the sense. You know, you wouldn't change any Northern Irish player for an England player, I don't think. But collectively, they seem to understand what they're doing and they're working to a plan. Just a footnote there, Chris Baird in the picture, if that booking is confirmed, it would be his second one of the group, so he wouldn't play against Wales. But he won't be thinking too much about that at the moment as he takes this free kick. And uh, underneath it there, oh, it's uh, Healy again. Well, what a, what a hero he's going to make himself. Not too well for David Healy, this group. He uh, got sent off in Wales for a bit of over-celebration by a fussy referee. This is Joe Cole. of the game at all. Nearly let Davis in there. England are all over the place here. They're just going to try and dig something out as Hargreaves comes forward to bow on the far side. Oh, and at the near, there's a bit of a triple at the near post there. I'm, I'm close to being speechless. What do you think? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I don't know what to say, it's just, it, I can't, we're better than, the, we're better than what we're showing. We're, we're better than the result in Denmark, we were better than the performance against Wales, and we're certainly better than, than tonight's performance. And there's got to be, you know, answers to those, there's got to be reasons for that, and answers to those questions that people are undoubtedly asking. Well, I'll tell you one thing that isn't the answer, and that's 4-5-1. This is Rooney, because that's what's really clouded the last few days for England. Why on earth they went for that formation is open to some debate. Rooney will take the corner. David Beckham now coming into the penalty area. Jermaine Defoe is in the six-yard box. Carragher, Ferdinand up. That's Rio Ferdinand. It's come back across to Rooney. Mike Taylor in charge. Five minutes to go. Five minutes separating from... Northern Ireland from one of the most memorable nights probably in that 125 year history. This will rival Jerry Armstrong in Spain 1982. Defoe. I was there that night in Valencia and uh, they've talked about it for, well, 23 years. Something else to talk about here. <laughs> Gillespie. Offside this time, Healy. The uh, Swiss official on the far side, Stefan Kua, certainly didn't look like raising his flag when Healy latched onto that through ball. Hargreaves. Rooney. Well, Laurie Sanchez, Graham, at the centre of one of the great shots of all time scorer of the Wimbledon goal that beat Liverpool in the uh, cup final <laughs> and look here as a manager he's going to do something similar unless England can just scramble something because that's all it would be now this is Stephen Davis of Aston Villa on the ball Healy to the right oh what was uh, Ashley Cole doing there there's the cross oh and Robinson had to be quick it actually he didn't touch it it went just over the bar but Ashley Cole would have had to take responsibility there for letting Healy in certainly would have, he, he tried just to flick the ball and missed it. And that's audacious from Healy, he's seen Paul Robinson off his line and he's gone for that. Paul Robinson always had it covered, but he's gone for a cheeky little chip. Well, England are coming forward again here to try to save the game. This is Rooney. Michael Owen. Rooney again. Cole has gone at them more or less as an extra attacker now on the far side. There's going to be a substitution here by Ireland. The goal scorer, I think, is going to come off. It'll be one of the great ovations of all time at Windsor Park for David Healy. And Ivan 
Sproul, a young man who scored a hat-trick for Hibernian against Rangers a couple of weeks ago. Um, he was a late call-up into the squad when the players were sent home, those two, and he will come out and make his full international debut. And what a night to do it in the closing minutes. Two minutes. In goes Ferdinand. Hit oh, a chance there! And oh. Well, Mike Taylor just grabbed it. Yeah, that was uh, England using a Northern Irish tactic. Long throw, flick on. And Michael Owen, I think he hesitated slightly because, uh, in all honesty, he's putting his head somewhere where he's not quite sure where the goalkeeper is. And I think just evaded him. And uh, a, a fortunate stop for Mike Taylor. Where well, Taylor got a hand to it, didn't he? That was a chance for Owen. Will England get another one, I wonder? The 89th minute at Windsor Park. The place is going crazy all around us with Irish supporters in full voice. Is he going to a party tonight? There'll be a few. There certainly will be. We won't have to buy a drink, John, will we, I don't think. <laughs> well, I don't think so, but then is there any different? Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. Um, that wasn't kind. No, but That's anybody that knows me... No, you, no, you, no you, you did buy the lunch today. I have to be fair. One minute. If the table, if the score stays like this, Poland would have 24 points and England 19. There's Rooney. Would be five points difference. Luke Young. Now, how much time will the Swiss referee have on? I wonder. Every Irish supporter is asking that question as Ivan Sproul tries to get past Ashley Cole. Owen against Cragen. Rooney now latches onto it. Gillespie trying to get back at him. Good goalkeeping by Taylor, and he wasn't uh, too happy with Rooney, I don't think, was he? No, I don't think he was, but I, th I think he's congratulating the efforts of Keith Gillespie, who I think's had an excellent game, actually. He's worked so hard down that side of the pitch. Four minutes of overtime. Four minutes of uh, tension here for both sets of uh, supporters and Ireland will be just watching the clock as England get a free kick. Hargreaves. Luke Young. No, Beckham can't steal in here. He's come back to the right-hand side these last few minutes but made no real impression there. Well, nobody's made an impression for England, really, in this game. Nobody at all. Sven Joran Eriksson's record of never having lost a qualifier is right in the balance here. And that's something, really, that, that you know, he's received a lot of criticism for friendly matches and the way he's changed substitutions, but he always had that, that record to fall back on. It's, it's an excellent record, but I think with the current climate, I think it's going to make, um, you know, it's going to make his life a bit uncomfortable, you know, until we play the next uh, next international. Well, that, yes, we've just got to be sensible and say if England were to win the two home games, then they would still qualify. We, we you know, it's not quite uh, curtains or anything, but there will be people asking whether the coach has lost the plot here. This is Rooney. It's gone underneath Young. Northern Ireland are trying to um, slow things down by making changes. Uh, Michael Duff, who's uh, a Burnley centre-back, is going to get a taste of the action. And I think it's going to be Stuart Elliott who leads the pitch. Two minutes to fall to, to the end of the game and Luke Young has got the ball and is going to propel it as quickly as he can now into the penalty area where Ferdinand and Beckham wait on this near side. Ireland get the ball away and a good release pass as well and Warren Feeney is away here. He's got sprawl to his left. Feeney's going to go himself, is he? Oh, he's a bit greedy there. He had a man just waiting for the pass, Feeney. And they've given England possession and they didn't have to in Northern Ireland. Whistles all round the ground at Windsor Park. Beckham. Now this is Rooney, he'll have a shot from here. That's, that's 
a big ask to try and score from there. It's a fantastic strike. We know what he's capable of, Wayne Rooney. But again, I think that's born out of frustration and desperation, really. Um, and unfortunately, that sort of sums up England's performance on an individual level. We're into the last minute of the allotted stoppage time. Northern Ireland 1, England 0. Gillespie down the line, Sprawl, turns inside, Feeney, Sprawl again, Feeney, same place from where Healy scored off, could have been two, Warren Feeney. Great link, link, link up play by the two, two uh, substitutes, Sprawl and, and Feeney, similar to Healy's strike really, and just misses the post. Oh, they're counting the seconds here in Belfast, this is Hargreaves. Well, I've seen some extraordinary nights in international football. This must come close. It's Owen Hargreaves, though. Have England got one last chance here? Hargreaves shoots, but there's no power there. And the 94 minutes are up. The, the Irish substitutes and coaches are just desperately waiting for the whistle. They're right up on their feet on the line. And the referee looks at his watch, and it has happened. Northern Ireland, they're running onto the pitch. The substitutes and the coaches, Northern Ireland have beaten England in Belfast for the first time since 1927. The first time anywhere since 1972. They've scored their first goal against them for 25 years. And it happened in the 74th minute. And it came from David Healy and Sven Joran Eriksson. Might well look ashen faced. He is going to come in for a barrage of criticism, and so are his team. That was a limp, lifeless England performance, Graham the so I have to say. It was. It was uh, uh, desperate in the end at times. And, and these players, our players are unrecognisable over recent sort of internationals.